Hi, thanks again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop. Hope everyone's having a great day and thank you for tuning in. So today we're going to be talking about Not Even Bones by Rebecca Schaefer. This book came out in 2018 and I have to say this. I'm kind of mad at myself that I didn't pick up this book sooner. Um, it's really funny. I got an arc for the third novel, um, which... I didn't know it was a third novel. I looked at the cover and I'm like, ooh, that looks cool. I need to read it. Um, I asked the publisher for a copy online and then what do you know? I get it. And then I had to, you know, I don't like reading books out of sequence. So I went, I got it and let, let me tell you, I was incredibly impressed with Not Even Bones. Um, I love Nita as a character. I love how she's kind of morally questionable. She's sort of like this anti-hero. And there's so much to her. There's so much complexities to her. You know, she moves around with her mother. Um, her mother is a black market dealer. And what I like about this novel is like the world building. There are supernatural creatures. They're called unnaturals. And they connect to a lot of mythology and a lot of lore from various different countries. I mean, you've got so many monsters in this novel that connect to so many cultures, and I think it's really interesting to see that sort of brought to life. And you wouldn't think, you know, unicorns are evil? Yeah, unicorns are bad, too, in this novel. You know, they're kind of like soul reapers. They, uh, they, can, they need to take your soul. But they can only take shattered souls. So, um, it's really interesting. I mean, that's just one example. You know, then you have Zannies, and then you have Nita herself. She's not natural. Um, she can heal herself. And, you know, she moves around with her mother, who is a, uh, you know, she's a black mark dealer. She hunts unnaturals, and then she sells their body parts online on the dark web so it's really interesting to see their dynamic her mother is very cool she's a very cold she's a very calculating person um she is very toxic to nita uh, but you know nita does have good memories of her i think it's really it's interesting to see their relationship because on the one hand, you know, she ha she's a really good mother, but she lets her greed get to her. Um, she likes the hunt. She likes what she does. It makes her happy. And when Nita starts to question that, you know, that's when they sort of butt heads. You know, she is emotionally abusive, um, somewhat mentally abusive to her daughter, but Nita's still strong, you know, and I love their dynamic, their evolution, um, in this novel, even though it's, there's very little, you know, Nita's kidnapped, she's sold to the black market, and she's put through a lot you know she always had this sort of moral compass to guide her she always thought you know well the people I'm dissecting for my mother are already dead so there's no big deal I mean that's where you kind of get like the sort of Dexter vibe to it and I loved Dexter I, I read almost all the books except for that last one um Dexter's Dead which I do need to read and I saw the entire series even though that last season was a little disappointing but whatever um, it does have a really Dexter-like feel. She sort of questions her addiction to dissecting, pe dissecting people. She is a scientist at heart. She wants to go to college. She wants to be um, a famous, unnatural scientist. You know, she wants to do that with her life. So it's really interesting because she's always questioning her morality. She's always questioning, is she a sociopath? Is she a psychopath? She's always questioning it. And I think the fact that she questions it sort of 
shows the reader the answer like no you're not you just have this really unhealthy addiction to cutting up dead bodies but that doesn't really make her a sociopath because she still has empathy she she does care and if you're a sociopath you tend to lack empathy um you know, so it's a very psychological read. It's a very emotional read, but it's so tension driven. You know, Schaefer is able to do so much with little space because, you know, once Need is captured, she's just kind of locked in a cell. And the novel explores a lot of gray area of what are you willing to do to survive in the world? You know, she's in the black market, not just any black market, the market of death. Um, and people are bidding on pieces of her you know and they want pieces of her so now she's kind of on the other end of things except now she's alive she is alive she's being threatened to be cut up and sold you know to people sorry coffee i need my coffee but and she's sort of going through everything in her mind, like, what does she need to do to, do to survive? And it kind of turns her into a monster. You know, there's always this, um, this phrase that I like to quote every so often. Um, to kill a monster, you have to become a monster, you know? So it's sort of like taking that high road. You can either forgive which is always harder to do or get your vengeance and she's really driven by her vengeance right now in this novel she's so driven by this desire to enact her vengeance and kill the people that have wronged her you know and you, you can empathize with her. You can sympathize with her. You want her, actually, to get her vengeance. Because Reyes is despicable. Um, Reyes in this novel is despicable. And when she meets her end, oh, it's gratifying. It is brilliant. And the market itself is a bad place. So Nita's whole thing is to just sort of destroy the entire black market. And that's her goal as she's sitting in her cage. And I really like that, you know. It raises the tension and it does a lot with such a limited space because Nita you know she doesn't have any shoes she's kind of stuck here and she has to think and let go of her morals so it's a lot of gray area that's why it's a it's a morally questionable novel and it's a very dark fantasy but it's so compelling to read because it's so thoughtful, you know, it really is thoughtful, it really is imaginative, and it really does make the reader think, you know, it makes the reader think about our own moral compass, you know, what are we willing to do to survive, it makes us think, and that's what makes it a good novel, any novel, I think, that makes you really think about the bigger picture, you know, good versus evil and those shades of gray in between because there are shades of gray in between. You know, Nita is going to do a lot of bad stuff, but it's for her own survival. And honestly, getting rid of some of these bad people are going to save so many other people out there who, like Mirella and Nita and Kove and Fabricio, you know, people like her who are kidnapped and sold. So it's a lot of morally questionable things happening in this novel. But you can empathize with it, you know, because you can relate to it, you know. So I love that about this novel. You know, I love the tension. I love Nita as a character. I love how she questions the things that she does. I love how sometimes she's really stupid. Because <laughs> sometimes she is. Sometimes she's really smart. Sometimes she's really stupid. She's like that other phrase, um, dumb genius. You know, uh, I learned that phrase growing up at MIT because a lot of, my, you know, a lot of people, my babysitters, my mom went to college there. So they all, they're all geniuses, 
and they sort of meet people who are smarter than them, and then they feel dumb. So they just came up with a thing, um, dumb genius, although I'm sure they didn't come up with it. I'm sure it's somewhere in society. But Nita is a dumb genius. You know, she's really smart, but sometimes she's really dumb. And I think that's what I like about her, how flawed she is as a human being, because it makes her relatable. Like, you want to root for her, but then you're like, ah, why'd you do that? You could do so much better. Like, you want to, you relate to her. You're able to like, connect to her as a character, and that's what I like about it. That's what's good about this novel. You know, lots of high tension, lots of character dynamic, dynamics, lots of character de- development. There's lots of shifts in the dynamics as well. So, it really grows as a story, and it sets up a really strong premise for a series. So, I just finished reading Only Ashes Remain, so the review for that's going to come soon. Um, and I'm really excited to read When Villains Rise, or The Rise of Villains. And, you know what, I think it's, I, I have to give this book four, four and a half stars, you know. Um, Not Even Bones, excellent novel, excellent novel. I'm so mad at myself for not picking it up sooner because it's so great. And I discovered a webtoon for it as well, a webtoon comic. Oh, yeah, I'm reading that. Even though I've already read the book, I'm I'm reading that. I love the artwork. It's great. Um, So once again, this is Not Even Bones by Rebecca Schaefer. I give it four and a half stars. I recommend purchasing this book off of bookshop.org because a percentage of all proceeds do go to supporting local booksellers. Now, if money's tight, which I know for a lot of us it is, check out this book from your local library because libraries are a great resource for the community and they deserve our support. And please don't forget to support me by liking this and following my podcast. You can also become an Anchor subscriber. There's a link in the description. And for 99 cents a month, you can help me make Sins Workshop podcast even better because there's so many things that I would like to do with it. On that note, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And as always, happy reading.